I'm Gary Sutton. I'm here with John LeBoutlier, former congressman from New York, now national political commentator. John, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning to you, Gary. How are you? I'm doing well. And, John, I guess we want to look back on the Democratic uh, Nevada debate and then, of course, the uh, caucuses uh, this past weekend. And Bernie Sanders gaining some head of steam right now, although we're still very early in the process. What's your take on all this so far? Uh, winning a double-digit victory in the caucuses over Joe Biden, who finished a very distant second, and so did Buttigieg. Uh, where, do you, where are we going next with this? Is, is Are we going to elect a socialist uh, to be the nominee for the Democratic Party or not? What do you think? It's very possible because of the way it's set up this year. Uh, Super Tuesday, which is March 3rd, which is eight days from now, uh, a third, or actually it's 38 percent of all the delegates will be picked on that day. And they have funny rules on how delegates are picked in each state. Mm-hmm. You have to get 15 percent or more of the vote to get any of the delegates. So mm. the polling has shown in a lot of these Super Tuesday states, California being the biggest one, that there's only Bernie's ahead, way ahead. And then there's only one other candidate at the moment over 15 percent. Wow. And if that's yeah. the case, then Bernie's going to get the lion's share of delegates and he's on track to be the leader coming out of Super Tuesday um, in delegates, which is everything, you know, and you need 1991 delegates to be nominated. And I think what's happening is he's on track to get close to it. If he doesn't get it on the first ballot, then he, he they'll take it away from him, and that'll split the party terribly. And then you have a brokered convention, the Democrats right? Democrats are in a mess. Yeah. They're in a mess right now. What about— and they have, It's like Trump, Trump in reverse four years ago, where all the other Republicans were against Trump. Mm-hmm. He was a minority candidate, but they couldn't get their acting gear to stop him. They couldn't have one guy against Trump, and then there's not one person against Sanders. So they're, the four of them— Bloomberg, Biden, Buttigieg, and Amy Klobuchar, they're actually, you add their numbers up, they're a majority in each of these contests, but they're split up. Yeah. And so unless they consolidate around one person pretty soon, Bernie will be the nominee probably. United we stand, divided we fall. Um, you know, what was your take on Mike Bloomberg last week? Comes out on the stage for the first time in the debates, by most accounts, didn't do that well. Uh, got a couple shots in, didn't do very great at all. Uh, what's your take on him now? He's spending a ton of money, over $300 million so far on the campaign, all his own money. Yeah, I feel that he was uh, really bad. I, 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 the debate was one of the more riveting things I've ever watched, including right. his inability to answer a question quickly and concisely. I understood it as a former candidate myself. These debates are not easy. And there's a lot of things going on on the stage where you've got, in his case, where he was standing, five candidates to his left with their hands in the air, and they're interrupting all the time. Yes. The five moderators in front of you, they're interrupting all the time. The audience is vociferous and applauding and booing and all. Sounds like a WWF right. audience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you have a clock in front of you that's telling you, hey, you only got 23 seconds left. So you got all that going on, and you got to try to answer coherently and look into the camera while you do it. It's not easy. The others have gotten better at it because they've done eight of them. And he's parachuting in and trying to do this thing, and he bombed. He really yeah. bombed. And he's got a lot to... And I to, don't know. He, he may have ruined his whole campaign with that bad performance. I, I agree with you. I think it really hurt him a lot. And I think there's a... And, and you know, it's funny. I said to people, I'm telling you, the, the, the glass of soda is going to hit him before it's all said and done. Something that trivial. But the intrusion of government into, you know, what size soda I drink, that's one of the things you continue to hear people say as well. How about who's on the most uh, likely to be extinct list after South Carolina? from the Democratic uh, field. Uh, Joe Biden on that list right now, or is he going to be able to get through South Carolina and move on to Super Tuesday? Uh, I, I don't think he's on that list yet, Gary, because I think he's probably going to win South Carolina. Okay. We, we, it's been leaked out today that on Wednesday morning, <clears throat> Congressman Jim Clyburn, who's the number one Democrat in right. the state, is going to endorse Biden. So my guess is Biden hangs on 
and that is the right term. He's hanging on by the mm-hmm. skin of his teeth, you know, <clears throat> that he'll win South Carolina. I don't think he's going to drop out. I think Tom, this guy, Tom Steyer, is finished after South Carolina. Yep. And he, whether he realizes it, I don't know. And now, there's only three days after South Carolina until Super Tuesday. So yeah. probably none of them drop out until after Super Tuesday. No, I think you'll see it. That's go. the conundrum. That's yeah. the conundrum. They they wait. They, they divide up the anti-Bernie vote. Bernie does great on Super Tuesday. The next day, Klobuchar, Steyer, maybe they drop out. But it's it may be too late by then. Mm. It's, it's a fascinating... By the way, I'm also... I have to tell you, I've been thinking about it all weekend. Okay. It's an assumption everyone makes that Bernie Sanders can't win the presidency if he's the Democratic nominee. That's what everybody says. Oh, he can't win. Well, the polling says he could win. Mm -hmm. Not that he will, for sure, but he is competitive with Trump uh, in every poll. Now, it's February. Right. The election's a long way away. But and, and as we know, maybe we are all missing the level of discontent with the situation in this country. It's on the question of do you think the country is on the right track or the wrong track? It's yeah. 60% say it's on the wrong track, 30% say it's on the right track. So if there's that much unhappiness, Maybe that's why this guy is doing better all the time than people think. Well, re- remember when he ran last time, you had people that were dissatisfied that voted for Trump, people that were dissatisfied voted for Bernie, and many of them stayed home when Hillary went to the you polls. So we'll watch what happens. As you said, a lot of uh, pie plates spinning right now. John, always good talking to you. Thank you, my friend, and have a great week. We'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Same to you, Gary. Bye-bye. Jo- John Lamutle here. And listen to WSBA Morning News 6 to 9 weekdays on News Talk 93.9 and 910 WSBA.